it's a very flashy film and it's a fun film but it feels empty too at the same time you know uh it, it it's it the only place is really sincere is with his action double toasted live in las vegas that's going to be october 8th and tickets are finally available x1entertainment.com forward slash double dash toasted doors open at 6 p.m meet and greet and cocktail hour to happen promptly afterwards so the the the, the after party is going to be in the same venue it's like, i think it's like two minutes away from the strip it's going to be a fun show uh, it's going to be a night of comedy, music, games, and as you see, the after party. We're going to have Tone Royal open for us. We're going to come out and do our thing. And get your tickets now. So, and I asked this question, knowing the answer from Mark, but I'm going to ask it anyway. Okay. Do you remember that phase of filmmaking after Pulp Fiction and El Mariachi? Of course I do. Where everyone was trying to be Quentin Tarantino, mm -hmm. but most of this shit came out like Robert Rodriguez. <laughs> yes. <laughs> You know, not, not that that's a bad thing. It's just that, you know, when these movies came out, you know, everybody wanted to be cool like Tarantino. You know, they want the, the hip dialogue. They want the hip music. Oh, they want that cool violence with all the cool gunplay, people pointing guns at each other, you know, the Mexican standoff and all that kind of stuff. Uh, and they wanted the cool action of Robert Rodriguez. Robert Rodriguez, of course, is the legendary filmmaker that made that movie for $9,000 and blew up, that movie being El Mariachi. And it was, man, you know, that they, they inspired a lot of people to be cool like then. They were rock and roll filmmakers back then. Mm -hmm. and, and Hollywood was green lighting anybody who came in with something even close to that. Oh, yeah. And celebrities, they're like, hey, these, 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 are, these, these are the geniuses you're talking about. You know what? Don't even need to read, don't even need to read the script. Just put me in. And, and I tell you, in that period where people were influenced by these guys and making movies that were, you know, there's no other way to say it, knockoffs. You know, they're doing that period. It was fun for like two days. <laughs> <laughs> you know? I mean, listen, it was fun for a while. For, 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 for a little bit. For like, a little like, bit. Like you got two days in the valley. It's like, all right, well, that, well, that was cool. Yeah, you but know. But then you start yeah. getting a whole bunch of stuff after. It's like, all right, that's the best about it. Yeah, you got a lot of things. Now, some of it was fun, you know, and some people were doing it. You know, I'll tell you what was cool about it. Some people got to make stuff for cheap, and as long as it was following in that trend, mm -hmm. it was, you know, it was something that got kind of noticed if they were lucky. And one guitar picking, sword swinging wanderer. If you scratch my guitar, follow the yellow brick road, homie. <laughs> <laughs> that was Six Train Samurai. Uh, something that's kind of a cult classic, but I mean, it definitely was ripping off the, the Tarantino style, the surf music. Sure. You know, even dressing up with the black suit and tie. Mm -hmm. You know, all the, all the cool violence that was in it. Yeah. You know, yeah, and just the way it was stylized. Yeah. Hey, it, 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 it gave us directors that actually. Kind of got their start doing uh, Tarantino in a way. Mm. All right, don't panic. All young fellas got in deeper than they could handle. Let me tell you about that shit, Harry. If Harry don't kill you, <laughs> then your father will. A lot of people say, what foreign movie is that? All I heard was, I hear it. I read it. I read it. I read it. I mean, we saw it like, man, y'all need some subtitles. <laughs> right? That was Lock, Stock, and Two Smoking That's Barrels directed. Yeah, directed by Guy Ritchie. Yeah. Guy Ritchie yeah. got his start doing sort of uh, really good oh, Tarantino yeah. knockoffs, man. But, you know, after a year or so, you know, yeah. with every every young filmmaker trying to be these guys, that shit got old quick. Yep. I, I You know, I was. I, I tell you, I was done when Tarantino and Rodriguez started ripping themselves off. I know. Like, Four Rooms? Yeah. It's just the pale imitation of what they do. I know. Mm -hmm. This movie that we're talking about tonight, which is Bullet Train. You know, the reason why we had that big setup right there is because Bullet Train, I, I would say, now I want to see what everybody else thinks, but Bullet Train is sort of a throwback to that period. And while that period got annoying to me, you know, we've, we've, we've had a break for yeah. a few years. Yeah, we've had a good break. Even, you know, even... Uh, you know, kind of, uh, uh, even Tarantino Rodriguez kind of pulled back and just kind of tried to do different things. Mm -hmm. It's a train full of assassins, of cool assassins. All of them trying to kill each other in cool ways, mm -hmm. very stylish ways. Uh, that alone makes this an automatic throwback to that period. You know, you have Brad Pitt, who is one of the assassins, but hey, you know, he's Brad Pitt. He can't be no bad guy. He's just... <laughs> <laughs> well, he, he seems to like... 
he's on a new path. Yeah, yeah, maybe. I, I, I ain't trying to kill people. I got to get something right. to get out. I'm just a, I'm, I'm just a, 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 a grab and go guy. Whatever you call it. He's like, uh, was it smash and grab? Smash and grab guy. I used, look, I used to be crazy like you guys back in the day, but you know, I've, I've got a therapist now. <laughs> I've been to BetterHelp.com. You know, I've been, I, I'm, I'm not like that anymore. I'm just trying to be calm, and you know, y'all should be too. But of course, all these other assassins are crazy, and the. Train is decked out in all kind of cool colors and anime characters running around and you know sensory overload. So these assassins can't get on in here and just be cool. You know they gotta. Well, they they sometimes they're getting upstaged by the train. Yeah, because that train is a character itself. That train is a character itself. But if you want a train that looks that badass, of course you got to do some stylish, cool ass violence, man. Mm-hmm. What, you, what you expect us to sit here and have conversations? <laughs> well, we actually do that. Yeah, we have real cool conversations. But when it comes to Stop and kick ass and do it with some nice music. You know, do it in ways that look good. Maybe a little slow-mo here and there. Stop for a little pose there. Hey, you know, oh, that's that period I remember, Martin. Back in the day when Tarantino Rodriguez used to do that stuff. You know, and think about this. What would it be like if you had the same guys like Tarantino Rodriguez, who, guys who work raw and work cheap? You know, what if they, what if during the early parts of their career they were given Two hundred million dollar budgets <laughs> and all the computers to make all the CG that they want. What would it look like if they did that today? Let's go ahead and take a look at this trailer for Bullet Train, which is directed with David Leach. David Leach, who uh, did the Deadpool sequel and also blessed the world with John Wick. Fate. That's a shit deal. Huge cast in this, you know. If you directed uh, uh, Deadpool two and you gave the world John Wick, you can pretty much get who you want to right now. Uh, Brad Pitt being one of the biggest ones, but Bad Bunny, the biggest musical artist in the world right now. Did oh, you know this? Oh, no. Puerto Rican, yeah, man. He's like he, as far as just like, you know, uh, appeal and recognition and yeah, and uh, yeah, Bad Bunny is one. Of well, was he the wolf? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. One of the biggest artists in the world right now. He's been trying to get an acting debut. Okay. He's actually going to be, uh, they, I think, if I, if I got this right, he's going to be Blue Beetle for DC, unless they pull the plug on that shit. Oh, really? Yeah, I think so. Blue oh. Beetle was a wrestler, right? No. no uh, oh, 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 Sony. Oh, so, okay. I got that. Oh, sorry. What are you thinking about? Uh, a wrestler? I'm sorry. Yeah, don't, don't even worry about it. I got, I got it mixed up. Okay. Uh, no, that was something else uh, that he's going to be in. But a uh, lot, of, lot of other people in here, man. Uh, Aaron Taylor Johnson, uh, Brian Tyree Henry. Uh, they have so many people in here that I didn't even recognize them. Uh, one of the people that I did not notice in here, well, I saw him, but I didn't know that that was him. Let me see if I can find his picture here. Cause y'all are probably gonna look at them and be like, I didn't know that that was him too. Uh, oh, right here. Logan Lerman. I did not know that was him. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, the whole time looking at it, I was like, I know I know who this guy is. I can't figure it out. And yeah. until the end credits, I was like, oh, god damn. Okay. Yeah, didn't even recognize him. And there's a lot of cameos in this movie, man, that you don't even see credited anywhere, which you'll hopefully will be surprised when you see the movie. Uh, so I hate to keep going back to this whole thing about, you know, the Tarantino Robert Rodriguez era where everybody was influenced by them and trying to be them and coming across as you know every now and then okay but most of the time pale imitations and knockoffs um you know i i don't mind revisiting that period of those knockoffs as much as i thought i would after watching this i'm like you know what this i thought i would be more annoyed by this but i have to tell you i don't miss it either (laughs) you know that period Mm -hmm. i don't miss you know because there's a lot of things that that go on here that rem- in this movie that remind me of this era of filmmaking. Um, you know, while the guys who started it, it felt authentic for them. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, okay, that's your style of writing. That's your style of, like, directing. That's cool. I, I could see that, man, you know. But uh, everyone that copied them at the time, the problem was is that unless you created something amazing, unless you created something great, you came off as pretentious. Hmm. If you, I mean, and I'll tell you what I mean by that, because back then everybody was trying to write like Tarantino. So they would drag out periods of dialogue so they could sound, so they could make the character sound cool. You know, they, you, you know people used to do sure, that all the time. Sure, yes they did. 
And you know, uh, uh, it's, a lot of these things were very stylized. This movie does a little bit of the same thing. In fact, they act, they actually update some of the coolness with having like this Japanese motif everywhere, Japanese fonts everywhere. Mm-hmm. You know, things spelled in Japanese that you can even read sometimes. Um, a lot of bright colors. A lot of this actually resembles. If you're gonna talk about Tarantino, a lot of this some that resembles uh, the Japan uh, story from that Kill was, Bill. from Kill Bill. Yeah. You know, movie does a lot of posturing, man. Swaggering slow mo shots. You know, while a hip soundtrack plays, all the celebrity cameos that I told you about. Um, and you know, and mostly there's the, the the stylish violence, man. All the the fun gunplay, which also feels a little bit updated here. I will say this. You know, I'm talking about this com- as compared to those knockoffs back in the day. But hey, the direction here is very cool. I thought I, you know, I looked at this and I thought, man, you know what? Uh, if you're gonna do that kind of violence, update it for this age, and they did update it for the people who are, you know, who love John Wick. They updated it for the age of Wick right mm-hmm. now, which y'all know how cool John Wick is when he's uh, fighting and shooting people. It's done the same way here, except it has more of a comedic angle. If there was a gun under this table, yeah. <laughs> oh, sh- Shit, I thought Karen was gonna get up and start fighting. <laughs> you blacks never shut up. <laughs> uh, you know, uh, uh-huh. and the bloody, I said this has a comedic angle to it. And the bloodier the, the violence gets, the, the I guess the, the more it's played up for laughs, which is something these people used to do back in the day, because it's so over the top. Yeah, it's way bloodier than you than, than the trailers give uh, give across. I mean, by the end of this movie, like the, the cameraman is splattered in blood. Man, it's so crazy. <laughs> this movie right here. Yeah, I'm um, sure the whole crew was wearing tarps. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> now I'm gonna pass this on to Martin, but before I do, I, 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 a lot of this stuff didn't really bother me. You know, them trying to be so cool. It can be annoying a little bit when it doesn't feel authentic. But uh, you know, I, what bothered me about this was everything is a callback in this movie, man. You know, they set up so many things in this movie. You know, we, you know we, we've seen this. You saw it in Pulp Fiction. Shit, you saw you saw it just not too long ago in uh, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Quentin Tarantino's still doing it. The callback where you introduce something early in the movie, like an object, a person, somebody says something, and then it gets brought back later on the movie where it influences something bigger and crazier. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and hopefully the audience remembers it and they anticipate it with like, oh shit, Oh, what's gonna happen now? You know, it's, that is something that uh, it's a is look, and a lot of people have done that. You know, like Quentin, like I said, Quentin Tarantino's done. It. I've done it. Sure. <laughs> you know, yeah. It's, and, it's not a thing where well, once this guy did it, nobody can do it. No, it's it, not it, that they can't do it. But with the, my problem with it here is that they do it so much in this movie that so many things are predictable because they set them up too strong. You know, to the point where I'm just kind of like, oh, okay, they said that, that's going to come back and influence this. This person mentioned they had this, oh, I know what's going to happen to them. At a time when people were doing that, when it was done right, you kind of forgot about it. You didn't remember it, you just kind of, and when it came up again, it was just kind of like, oh, shit, oh, yeah, that. Oh, I remember that, ooh, it's about to get wild. But now here, it's just kind of like, shit, man, I was, I, you know, I, I predicted everything that they introduced because, again, it's pushed so hard. That I was like, all right, uh, you know, I, 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 did I write this script <laughs> right here? You know, I, I uh, you know, for me, when that's the problem when you try to do something this hard, and I can predict everything that's happening. I thought it was done really well. I, I was you know, the the things that you you saw where you like, okay, I know it's going to come into play. I was like, I know this is going to come back into play, but how? Uh, especially after seeing the Gray Man, it was so nice to see something that was really written yeah. and like pieced together where it's like hey we actually have a plan here where this is going to happen and all these characters and this felt like a like a like an anime or a manga maybe more like a manga uh, come to life i was really enjoying this over and over like the, even all the jokes or the the surprises were, were getting me yeah and you know, listen you know some of this like i said might not bother people you know it's just a matter of, of, of taste some of you might not see the thing is Maybe you do love that period of filmmaking where you don't, you love the knockoffs. Maybe you weren't even born at that time, and this is completely new to you. Maybe you're like, I'm, I'm not old like you. Mother- I, don't know, <laughs> I don't know what this is about. Maybe you find the movie to just be you know wacky fun. And I, I'm not I'm not saying that that's a bad thing. Well, I will say that it does get to a point where you know 
what's really going to test you with this movie, and it's something you already said, what's really going to test you with this film is how crazy you are willing to get with this. How long are you going to ride that train? <laughs> You know, how, how far are you willing? Are you gonna, I mean, we're going to take this train all the way because it gets wild. And the tone shift in this movie is insane for a movie that's already insane. Uh, there's a point where there's a character who gets, and I don't want to spoil anything, and I'm being, I'm being very vague with this, so I'm not. But this is going to be one of the turning points for a lot of people. This is where you're going to either say, let's keep going, or can let me off right here. <laughs> because what happens with this is that there's a character that gets kicked off, of, off the train. But he wants to get back on. He still ain't finished with his business. And to get back on that train, does he say stop, pull a lever? No, no. he jumps on this shit. A train, a bullet train, y'all. There's a reason why this movie's called Bullet Train. 275 miles per hour. And this fool jumps on it and is sticking to that shit like Spider-Man. <laughs> <laughs> and, and somehow, some way, manages to get kicked back, uh, to, get, to get back on. And from that moment on, since he's on it, was everybody like, well, shit, I can do that too. Uh, physics said, well, I, I got somewhere to be anyway. So, you know, it's at, th at this point, everybody, you got, but near the end of this movie, you got about 20 guys riding on this train like it's a skateboard. Now, I'm not saying that that's bad. This movie's already set up that this is not, this is an yeah, exaggerated world. I'm not saying that that's a bad thing at all, but I'm just saying, as you said, the movie has, at this point, it's like, well, we're going to be a cartoon, let's just go full anime with you, it. You, you are absolutely right, because it, it is at that point where you were riding with it, but there you, you have to make a decision. Is this too much for me, or have I been riding it as an anime that's become a cartoon, and do yeah. I want to keep having fun with it? Yeah, because you get it. Listen, once it turns into an anime cartoon, it ain't turning back. It ain't like a one-time incident. No, no. It's not like, you know, no. let's just do this and hope you don't remember it, or, you know, let, for the people who like it, well, too bad, we're not doing this no more. No, they go full-fledged anime with this, and it gets wild. And at that point, you know, you have your decision to make. You know, and I, at that, I'll be honest with you. I looked at it, didn't bother me. The guy jumped on the train, he stayed on there, and I was just like, okay, this is what we're doing, all yeah. right? Hey, I, they already set up what what kind <laughs> right. of world this is. Yeah, yeah. If you were still getting up, this is too much. It's like, yeah. you, you yeah. were here for the last first hour or so, belief. right? Yeah. You always have to suspend, suspend belief and then just keep letting it go because it gets, like you said, more. And yeah. More. I'm not going to sit up here and complain where a bunch of characters look like they came out of Street Fighter anyway. <laughs> and they're getting on this train and all of a sudden they do some crazy anime shit. And I'm just like, hey, wait a minute. You know, no, I'm not, I'm not going to do that. I'm okay with it. I'm all right. Uh, you know, like I said, I, I just don't think, I, I, think it's a, I think it's trying too hard. And I see through that sometimes. And when I say it's trying too hard, not with the action. The action is cool. It's trying too hard to be cool. And uh, that is, they know that is something there. It doesn't bother me to the point where it was kind of like, look at you, you think you better than me. No, it's not like that. It's kind of like I can see through the movie at, at that point, and I don't. And it's ta it takes me out when I feel like I'm, when I see a film trying too hard. At least in my, you know, in my eyes. However, one of the things that did keep me interested in this movie, besides the stylish action, was the actors or were the actors. Uh, yeah, um, I was amazed by how many of these actors could pull off convincing British accents. Yeah, Brian Tyree Henry. I mean, look, there's a ton of people in here, and, and everybody's... I like that the movie is allowing people to try some different things, or giving first chances to people. You know, uh, you know, uh, Brian Tyree Henry in the movie does a British accent, and hey, and he's, he's actually pretty good at it. Mm -hmm. His brother, you know, he studied, uh, uh, he, he's, he's British and didn't tell nobody. <laughs> so, but, <laughs> But he wait, paper boy? Yeah, paper boy. Yeah, paper boy. Paper boy is paper boy's been a Brit the whole time. Paper boy been sipping on tea and crumpets this whole time, y'all. Not gin and juice. Not gin and juice. He, he ain't been drinking that that Hennessy. He been sitting up there with his pinky out. Have a good day, governor. You know all that kind of shit. But his his uh, his accent is is actually very good. Um, also, uh, uh, again, tons of people in here, and, they, and a lot of this is just for the people in here to to do something fun. Uh, a lot of a lot of the people that you see in this movie, they're cameos. But what I will tell you is that I really did, I really did enjoy uh, Brad Pitt. I love Brad Pitt yeah. in this movie. Agreed. Brad Pitt is the character that I've been waiting, uh, that I've been wanting in action movies. And like in the Gray Man, I said, you know, the problem with with uh, with with, with uh, 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 Ryan, Ryan Gosling. Gosling is that he's doing all this crazy shit and just. 
just crying about it. <laughs> I didn't want that, you know, just kind of just acting like nothing's going on. You know, I could make, wake your ass up. Right. Acknowledge that crazy shit is happening to you. Yes. That movie was only alive when Chris Evans was on screen. Yeah, like I, yeah, like I said, eat your cereal, man, and wake up. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and have fun with this yeah because that's the biggest problem like Ryan Gosling was not having fun yeah and that movie was even more ridiculous than this one but nobody's acknowledging it yes Brad Pitt in this movie actually uh, uh, had a lot of fun with this the reason why I like him in here is because like I said he's a character that, is, that he, he's acknowledging like this is crazy and I don't want to be here mm -hmm. he's, he's, he's a Jackie Chan type character mm -hmm. and he's just pretty much just the character is acknowledging things that are going around him, and Brad Pitt is having a lot of fun. And I, uh, I enjoyed, uh, I enjoyed watching him in this. Well, man. It, it seems like this is the key to Brad Pitt's charisma: is that he's got the leading man looks, and he's in there, and he's a uh, he's pretty much an action hero, but he's humble. He's not trying to take over. And this was him in The Lost City and even in um, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I, I really, I, Brad Pitt is, you know, for years I've really enjoyed Brad Pitt, but now he's starting to loosen up a lot more. Mm -hmm. You know, he's like, shit, I'm getting older and can't be riding that pretty boy shit for too much longer, so, so I'm just going to have fun. I know who killed the kid. I couldn't give a rest, so. Oh, I would love a bottle of water. You dumb son of a bitch, you should have saw that coming. You that's, you know what, that's what you get, you deserve that. What you think he was gonna do? Right. I do have, I do have one criticism with, with him uh -oh. in the movie. Yeah, it's just, it's just that, I, don't, I love him, but I don't, I don't think his character was consistent uh, <laughs> because he gets, he, at the beginning, he's, he's a little smarter than he is later, like he's, you know, maybe he got hit in the head a lot, but but <laughs> he, did, he did. But yeah, he, maybe he got hit in the head a lot or something. But throughout the movie, he gets just a little dumber <laughs> as the movie goes on. You know that, like uh, you know, the, because in the in the beginning of the movie, he's just a guy that's just reluctant. You know, he's just a guy that just wants to get the job done and get out. By the end of the movie, he's just mentally challenged. <laughs> I don't know what happened between then and there. What took Thor five or six years to do to get dumb took him an hour. <laughs> Like he must have had five concussions or something because at the end he's just he's he's, a, he's almost like they got the mind of a child. I'm like, what happened, what happened to you? Yeah. <laughs> uh, but you know that's that's just something I, I just thought was inconsistent. I but I didn't it didn't make me dislike the character. I will tell you this though, uh, for for the people who are going to see this because they want to see this for Bad Bunny. <laughs> It's the wolf. If you're going to see it just for Bad Bunny, I'm going to tell you right now, you're going to get your money's fully worth because he's he's only in there for a little bit. I'm not going to tell you why or how, but he's it's, it's almost like they they said you ain't ready to act that much just yet. <laughs> All right, so yeah, you didn't you know yeah, slow your slow your ass down. And we gonna we gonna we gonna break you in a little bit, but you don't you know you ain't getting no big role in here now. <laughs> Consider this a screen test. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you know, slow your ass down. But he's he, you know, I, I can't tell you whether he's bad or not because I I don't speak Espanol. But he you know he's uh because he's speaking mostly Spanish in this. Right, right. But he does have a cool segment in it. Well, I think he's got you know who who knows how he delivers lines, but he's got great presence. He does. No, there's a reason why this guy is one of the, the most popular performers in the world right now. Because I mean, look, he's got charisma. You know, I mean, that's, there's there's no and he's got a look. There's no doubt about that. You know, and he does. Uh, and, and hey, look, the action that they give him and the little bit of lines he has to say, I don't know what he's saying, but it looks like he's saying them good, uh, doing them well. So, yeah, you know, it's. Uh, I thought it was a good role for him because he doesn't have to speak a lot. Where it sounded like I might not have liked this movie before, yes, there are some things that annoy me. And I'm just, this, you know, in this kind of filmmaking for me today is, you know, the, that, again, the throwback to the Tarantino and Rodriguez ripoff era. I, it's, it's not something I'm a big fan of, so it's personal with me. However, I can say that uh, the movie is fun, man. You know, I, 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 it's fun, but I can feel it trying too hard. It's, it, I would compare it to this. It's like listening to somebody brag, you know, about, <laughs> you know, somebody brag about, somebody's bragging and showing off their car. The movie's very flashy, and, and that's kind of like what we have here. Hey, the movie's like bragging, like, hey, look at the cast we got. Look at the money we got. You know, look at the cameos we've been able to afford. It's a very flashy film, and it's a fun film, but it feels empty, too, at the same time. You know, uh, 
it, it, it's, it, the only place it's really sincere is with his action. I mean, I'll be lying if I said, you know, there's not, some, there's not something in there that, that you will possibly enjoy. I mean, it's, it's the, the, uh, like I always say, you know, if you really want to get by on something, don't take yourself too seriously. And that's the thing with this movie. Mm-hmm. It's not taking itself seriously at all. And uh, if it was, I would be a lot harsher on it. But it's not. You know, it's, it's still something fun to watch. But, hey, I'll let you kind of close with things here. Uh, yeah, well, once again, I had so, so, so much fun with this movie. And it being a throwback to those, those 90s movies that you talked about, it was kind of fun to revisit it in something that was good. Because we had a point where they, they just kind of got half-assed. And, yeah, you brought up Kill Bill. I just thought, man, watching this makes me think, like, I'm not the big fan of the Kill Bill movies, but the way people are, I felt like, okay... I feel like when they watch Kill Bill, they get what I get watching this. It's as flashy as this is, as much as it's bragging, it just didn't fall into what I feel uh, Tarantino will get kind of self-indulgent with. And and this constantly kept moving. And the train itself is a character. And it's there's so much they they build these characters that are short, but they give them a lot of backstory. And it really felt them. Just that the actors brought them to life. And, and and even some that I was like, I don't like you. And then by the later, I was like, all right, I I, I like this guy. I like I, I know I like the characters when I'm at a point where oh, I don't want any, I don't want them to die. Yeah. And it ended up being a whole lot of those. And yeah, we don't even mention everybody in it. Uh, my really my biggest complaint is that is a point when it was about to wrap up, and then they went, whoa, yeah. we got to have the big finale. And I was like. All right, I didn't necessarily need the big finale. It was entertaining. I, I laughed all through it, but I, you know, I, I was like, I, I didn't need that. It could have, it could have yeah. stopped earlier than that. But other than that, I had a great time in this. What would you give it? I would give it a, a full price. Yeah, well, I'm a big dip from that. One of the reasons why, if this movie was shorter, I'd probably be giving it more. But this, it's way too long for me. Man, that's a big thing with it. Uh, but you've heard everything I had to say about this, man. Uh, you know, I don't. I don't know until they come out with bullet plane or bullet bus or something, you know. <laughs> you know, you know, man. You know, my advice for that would be to cut a little bit shorter. But uh, yeah, man, I don't know. Maybe after being, you know, just so many Fast and Furious movies, which by the way, I think this has a lot more personality than those movies. So I will give it credit for that. Uh, but yeah, it's something I wouldn't feel the need to rush out and see. So I would give this a high rental. I don't, want to, I don't want to deter anybody from watching this. I think a lot of people might go, and it might be worth the matinee for them. Keep in mind, this is a personal thing with me, so I don't want to deter anybody from going to the theater. When I say don't go to the theater, I, just like, like, I would not feel the need to watch this on the big screen, but uh, I think a lot of people might. So just you know, make up your own decision with this. It's just a personal rating of mine, uh, high rental. And, and that's, a good, that's a good rental, man. It's a good thing. It's not like I'm, you know, if it was on Rotten Tomatoes, it would still be fresh. You know, we, we, we wouldn't be throwing tomatoes at anybody. It wouldn't be no splat. 